Welcome back, guys. Hi, this is Donna Sharp with Holistic Wellbeing. Thank you for joining me here on day 477 of doing these lives. I do trust and pray that you had a fantastic day today and that you started your day off with prayer and also will be ending in prayer because that's what we all need right now in a time such as this. So as you are already aware, I have been speaking from a book, Three Steps to a Strong Family, and it's by Stephen Covey. So I've been breaking it down step by step uh, as he gradually merges into what it actually looks like when the children are working along with the parents collectively together. So what I'm going to do tonight is just speak as a continuation from last night, early morning, should I say. And um, it's on the topic of decision making. All right, so I spoke on decision making last night uh, as it pertains to a lot of the youngsters. But I want to speak a little bit more to the adolescent, the adolescent today. And it doesn't far exceed a child that's a little bit younger. So it actually goes both ways. So there are two important things that parents can do to help children improve their decision-making abilities while they are in grade school. Things that will protect them and prepare them for the weighty and potential dangerous choices they will have to make as adolescents and young adults. I have to tell you, even adults have a difficult time making decisions. So again, I say, how is it that the children's step and process going to be any easier? So there are two steps here. The first one is let them start off by making decisions about saving and spending money when they are quite young. Uh, Stephen Covey suggests that the child should be right at or about the age of eight, because when you teach them to first begin handling uh, funds that are coming into their hands, right? First of all, they don't like to spend the money that they receive. They want to spend mommy and daddy money right? But what typically happens is when they earn a little bit of money and they see that you didn't go and pick the money off of a money tree in the backyard, then chances are when they get their own money, they're going to hold on to it a little bit tighter. But then you have children, as I mentioned, they're all different. Some children, it's very easy for them to save and other children are spenders, just like the adults, the same exact thing. So whatever habits you're creating, try to create it, he suggests, at the age of eight, because this allows them to get into a good routine and a good habit in advance so that by the time they get older, it's an easy process for them and it's not something uh, so tough that they have to deal with and they're wondering, oh my gosh, this is difficult. I have things I wanna buy, I have things I wanna spend and get, why can't I just get it now? I'm sure a lot of people <laughs> during this whole virus pandemic is saying the same thing. You know, if I knew what I knew when I knew, I would not be in certain situations right now. So it really comes in handy. So encourage your children to develop the habit of saving their money because it will help to take them a long, long way as they mature in life. So how soon to save? It is important, like I said, to try it at the age of eight. It is important that they make these decisions early because earlier, as you know, they develop certain habits that they won't necessarily break so easily, right? So what uh, the decision that they make early, what it allows is better con the consequences are minor. So if they're going through a situation, I have to go back to what's going on right now with everybody in the world. Um, if they were saving at a young age, they would have a nest egg, so to speak, to rest on. Because right now, a, a lot of things aren't really promised. Nothing's promised but a good salvation. So if, you, if they had, for example, a child that saved from the age of eight and this pandemic happened, you know very well that they'll be sitting on some money to hold them until there is some light at the end of the tunnel that says, listen, we're going to free all of this. You guys are ready to go back to, I would not call it normal, uh, but at least they'll be prepared. So this is, a, this is an excellent example of that. So the consequences are minor. Also, it assists them in learning the principles of self-reliance. Um, it's nice when they can depend on themselves for certain things. It's not that the parents are going to be far. They're going to be there as a support system, be there to help them with that safety net if, if needed. But remember, it's a learning process for them. So if you catch them every single time, they'll never ever utilize um, that learning point to strengthen them. So allow them to learn as well, right? So the how, um, well, the second thing also is it also assists them with uh, delayed gratification. Uh, it helps them to uh, work on delayed gratification. So necessary, it, it pays, this pretty much means that they're not going to want to buy something all the time. They can sometimes wait for certain things. Because remember, everything is not always necessary. 
People always think, I need this, and I need that, and I need this. No, it's not everything in life you need. There's a lot more wants, believe it or not, in life than the things that we actually need, okay? There are certain essentials that we need in life, and really those are the ones that we really should focus on first and foremost. Everything else can go on the back burner and just wait for a future date, all right? So the how relies on the second the second point, I mentioned to you that there were, um, Stephen Covey speaks on uh, two important things that parents should do to help their children improve their decision-making process. So the second one relies on the, the how. So you want to help them to make a list of decisions in advance, right? And this is pretty much the upper grade children, uh, as I mentioned, high schoolers, adolescents, that are a little bit far beyond the earlier stages where they're not clearly understanding certain things. So a system by making a list in advance, an upper grade ch uh, child, they're capable of handling scenarios much better. Their thought process is gonna be different than a child that's much younger. Uh, this also helps them to prepare for any dangerous and difficult situations. How does that happen? By helping them to make decisions before they are actually involved in them because they can shift your thought process, change your mind, decide, is this, is this the right road I'm going down? So it helps them to really get their mind in the right space before making that particular decision. Um, here's a suggestion. Have your child make a decision ahead of time in a journal. I don't know if your children actually journal right now, but that may be a good suggestion because what you wanna do is uh, allow them to make a lot of notes, okay? Q and A's by themselves, you're not with them and thinking of different scenarios that they may go through in life. And then just writing down Q and A's and whatever comes to mind is what I call brain dump. I remember I did a live on brain dump. Dump everything on paper, all right? Um, spend time with the Q and A uh, to assist them in walking through the process. Now, the next thing is uh, break the list down and take it apart day by day. You never wanna approach all of this at one time because what's gonna happen? You're gonna overwhelm them and they're gonna go, oh my gosh, this is a lot to think about and realize being an adult is gonna be this difficult, right? You're gonna overwhelm them too fast. So if there's a list of 10 things, you give them, you speak on maybe two of them one day to the next, or maybe you feel that they're more capable of handling more, maybe it's three. You know, as I mentioned, no two children are alike, so you can't treat one the way you're gonna treat another. So gauge them based on their intellectual level and where they are in the scheme of things, what their thought process is like, how quickly they catch on to things. Break it down into days and come back to it each time. And then you wanna allow your child to think about them. You want them to meditate, meditate on it. As the Bible says, meditate on those things, right? And make sure it's in your spirit. Sometimes reading something or seeing something or hearing something one time is not enough. You have to meditate on it so that you can really ask yourself the questions, what is it that's in this for me? What was the message behind this? All right, is this something I can use now? Is this something I needed last week? Is this something that's gonna do me good in two months from now? You have to meditate on whatever it is that you're, you're learning, right? So, and the next thing is share your decisions, share your decisions with them. You never want to share your points with them in the beginning. Because if you do that, again, what are you going to do? You're going to take away the reins from them as far as making those decisions. Because you really want to see what direction they're going to go. If you're starting to input and throw your ideas at them and saying, listen, I think you should do this this way. It would work better that way. What do you think is going to happen? You're going to shun them. Now they're going to feel like they're insubordinate and they can't do anything for themselves. They're going to shy off and they're going to say, oh man, you know what? I would have thought about that, but I didn't have time to really discuss it before my parents started to talk on the topic. So you come into the picture after the fact and discuss these list of items with them so that you're now giving them the confidence that they need and the confidence that they have earned up until that point to be able to make those decisions freely. All right. So allow what you have, you both have, okay, decided to become a pledge. It's nice when you do something like that because, again, it's, it's something to look forward to. Make it a pledge between you and your children. And it's almost like an oath. And so later on, they'll go back and say, you know what, I don't want to break this oath that I have with my parents. We went through a lot to really develop these points on how to make this particular decision. 
So I want to hold true to this. Make it a pledge. It just gives it more involvement, if you understand what I mean. And allow what you both have, uh, making it a pledge, it gives them more encouragement. As they approach, approach for example, uh, the dating age, all right? Uh, uh, one of the greatest decisions that children around that age have to do is think about, For this is an example of the level of physical intimacy that it that takes place between them and the opposite sex. You know, the Bible says many things on that. So just want to encourage you that you need to go back to the word and follow what the word actually says. Uh, but in those, in examples like that, it's a lot of decision that the child is going to have to make. And by using that as a point to create these decisions around, these questions around, it really gives them a lot more to think about. So when they're placed in that particular situation, they don't feel like they're caught, caught, <laughs> caught, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, it sneaks up on them. There's something else I'm trying to say. Sometimes I can't find it. It left the coop. <laughs> All right. So a two additional critical points that I want you to keep in mind is first, be sure that your child understands the reason behind the decisions in advance. And remember, these aren't my words, guys. I'm speaking directly from Stephen Covey's book. I'm just giving this to you as a reference so that you can use it to add to your current situation, to enhance Right? Maybe you need to take away some things you're doing. I don't know. But I am just the conduit. I'm just allowing God to work for me so I can deliver these points to you. And you can take it however you wish. So the first one is be sure that your child understands the reason behind the decisions in advance. So if I'm going to make a decision to be intimate with a young lady, what is that going to net me? Where am I going to end up? How is school going to play a part in this? What if this happens? You know, so get them to go through the scenario and walk through those thought process in advance. Uh, the best and strongest time to make a decision is before you are actually faced with it while your thoughts are clear. Remember, I don't know how many times I've actually said this, but I'm going to say it now. A lot of people in this world, they make decisions on an emotional level. All right. Their emotions are caught into it, and that's how they make decisions. That is not the right way to make a decision. A great example of that is a business owner. You know, you have someone that uh, you're trying to do business with, and the client's getting softy, mushy. You have to remove all that out of it. It's black and white when it comes to business, all right? So you want to make sure that you're looking at the, the situation for what it is, and not how you're feeling. Women have a tendency to add more emotions to things that they do. That's why half the times they can't see the actual road ahead and make those right choices because they're tied up into that. When I did the segments on relationship, that's one of the things I spoke about. Guys are very black and white. It's black, it's white. It's not gray, all right? So if you come home as his wife and you're saying, that you're coming home and you, you have, an example I gave, this was way back ago when I was speaking on relationship. The wife comes home, she's having a hard day at work and she comes home and she's crying and she's like, oh my gosh, this is, this is what they did to me. Uh. And her husband's saying, okay, tell me the problem. What was going on? What happened? She explains the situation. What he does is he just weeds out all of those things in between, those soft things in between. It's like, okay, so I see exactly what you need to do. You need to go back to work and here's what needs to happen. But you don't understand that when she keeps going on, she has to, a woman is very nurturing. So she has to go through this whole scenario of feel sorry for me oh my gosh you're not warming up warming me up that's not the point here we're trying to resolve an issue so same goes with the children all right pretty much by assisting with assisting them with the decision making process in advance helps to prepare and clear their mind and remove all of those emotional things so that they can step forward in truth and make the right decision based on the right situation. So remove the emotions out of it, all right? And then the second thing is, it, this also helps your child to prepare for actually sticking to the decision through scenarios. I mentioned last night, scenarios are nice to have. I read one to you last night um, where I speak in, as a parent and as a child, as a parent, as a child. Child ask a question, parent answers. Give them a scenario because scenarios you can always go back and remember. All right. So help your child to prepare for actually sticking to the decisions through scenarios or by role playing for each of the decision he or she makes in advance. Use your imagination. Be creative. Don't be afraid to 
to fuzzy it up to make it creative because those are the things that create a, a, a watermark in their mind so that five months from now, they're going to go back and say, man, I remember when my mom and dad did that. It's so painfully clear. It was a lot of fun. This was the message I received from it. It makes it plain and clear for them, right? So use your imagination. So tomorrow what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue with the decision-making process and I'm going to move into it a little bit further, all right? And Wanda, thank you so much for joining. But what I'd like to do before I close out this evening is just read two scripture verses pertaining to children and why it is so important for you to pour into them at a young age, all right? It's super, super important. So I'm going to give you this as a takeaway tonight. Feel free to jot the message down. And as I say, when you hear it one time, it may not make sense. It's going to be important for you to, what did I say earlier? To stew on it, to meditate on it. So write the scripture down. You can go back and reread it for yourself. Go back and look in your study Bible. So it breaks it down in layman's terms. So you understand how to incorporate these two scriptures with your current children. All right. And remember, guys, they don't have to be near near you right now. They could be far away and you can still minister to them to make sure that you are placing on them on the track that they need and you're preparing them for those tough times. It's going to be tough sometimes to watch them go through it, but sometimes they have to do that because when they do, then they'll appreciate it much more. All right. So the first scripture is Psalms 8, 2, and it reads like this. It says, through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avengers. All right. The second one is Proverbs 22, 6, and it says, start children off on the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will turn from it. And guess what they're going to do? They're going to come right back to you because you are the one that nurtured them from day one. So I'll always go back and tell you guys, bend the tree from it young. It's a Jamaican, a saying that we have in Jamaica. Bend the tree from its young. What does that mean? It means you don't want to try to let the child grow up and all of a sudden you're trying to curb them and discipline them at the age of 30. That's not how this works. <laughs> so you educate them from a young age and they'll grow up in the way that they should go and it's based on the direction that you've given them. So listen, guys, if you enjoyed what you heard tonight, I'm going to ask you to share it with someone else because they may not be privy to some of the information that I just shared with you. And the only way that they're going to find out is if you don't keep all the information to yourself, especially if you are actually watching them go through a situation right now where you think that these words are going to be valuable for them. The second thing is go on to my website, which is Holistic Wellbeing. It's W-H-O-L-E-L-I-S-T-I-C Wellbeing.com. And there you can find out why I'm so passionate about what I do. In the meantime, I'll be back again tomorrow. If you love what you saw, please select love and message. Type your comments in because I love to read your messages just to see where your thought process is and actually what you gain from it. I can't communicate with you two-way right now, two-way communication unless you write to me. That's your second way of communication. So message me and I'll be happy to read them. Uh, but in the meantime, I do pray that this served you well. And that's all I have for you this evening, as if that wasn't enough. But I'll be back again here tomorrow on day 478. But I trust and pray that you are staying safe and you are protecting your family, whether they're near or far. Um, continue to pray. Continue to tell your family members that you love them. Because nothing is promised tomorrow, as I mentioned, but a good salvation. So love on them every single moment that you get. If you logged on later on to this live, I just, I'm just going to encourage you that you type replay in there. But don't just put replay, okay? Put some comments after you've watched it and let me know what you think. So I'll see you back again here tomorrow. Wanda, always a pleasure. Wanda, I love your vegetable garden. Thank you so much for keeping me up to date on your progress and taking some of those things that I taught into effect. They're coming along wonderful. And guess what? You'll be able to eat naturally from your own garden and don't have to worry about purchasing things that have pesticides, herbicides, and homicides on it. So thank you so much for following through. Guys, I will see you back again here tomorrow. Have a fantastic rest of your Sunday. And if no one told you that they care, please know that I do. I love you guys. Ciao. Have a great evening.